why is the derivative here? Uh, um, uh, yeah, why is the derivative correct? Yes. So when they did the f prime of x, yep. Um, they should have done a two x minus one. That two should not have been there. Right. What should the derivative of two be? Zero. 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 So it doesn't need to be there. Okay. Doesn't need to be there. Should yeah. be there. Not part of it. Not part of it. And so then you'll go. Yeah. yeah so it just be one. Yeah. So three. So one half. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. That, as I was grading the quizzes and homework quizzes, that was a mistake I was seeing just a little too often. We're getting the derivative of a constant is zero, especially when we're taking the derivative implicitly and the variables on the or the constants on the other side of the equation that just got left as two a lot. Okay. So, is this about Rolle's theorem or the mean value theorem? It's about Rolle's theorem. Why is it Rolle? Like a, that's kind of like when someone's sick and you say, what's wrong with this guy? You say, he's got a runny nose. You know what that's not what's wrong with him. That's it's a symptom of what's wrong with him. So that's like an indication that we are looking at Rolle's theorem. But you know, Rolle's theorem has these specific conditions, a specific if-then statement. are worth what? Are zero. They're at zero. Y is zero, the x-intercept. They're both on the x-axis, right? So they're both at the same height, right? Same y value. And so somewhere between them, since the slope between those two points is zero, there's some point between those two points. We're guaranteed on this continuous or differentiable function to have a slope of zero. Agree? Right? It's an anterior continuous by where a b value is. It says find the x-intercepts. Right? Now, by definition, the x-intercepts are both on the x-axis. Oh. Right? Now, we found the a and b. They didn't tell us a and b. The a and b we found were the x-intercepts, negative 1 and 2. Okay. So we're just adopting those as a and b? Yep. Okay. Not a equals b, but f of a equals f of b. A and b are different. Okay. So the, st the step marked with a red, the step marked with a red arrow or then arrow. Why is it incorrect for Avery to set the derivative equal to zero? We don't say it, just write it down to yourself, right? Can we talk about MRIs in this class? If I look at an MRI of your brain right now, I want to see the lighting part of your brain. Lighting up. Green? Whatever color an MRI is. If you have a helicopter, you're doing fine. You don't even need to be a high school. Then again, if you spend your money on the yes. MRI, you need to be a very high school. Hey, write down the thing, would you? Goodness. Here she goes. Back at this problem before, uh, Denzel finds the derivative. Okay, it does it does it incorrectly, but does set it equal to zero. That was right. Does it equal to zero. What is he looking for when he sets it equal to zero? Where? Where's for c? What about c? Where? What happens to c? Mm. What equals zero? C. C equals zero. The slope. The slope at c is zero. 
Okay, so he's looking for a place for the slope of zero. All right, so just reviewing that, maybe that informs you just a little bit. What do you say? Raise the old hands. <laughs> Kelly? Um, he's trying to slope the unit he points. Okay, so what theorem is this working with? Um, the, the, the second one. one. Yeah. The second one, the mean value theorem, yeah. The more general one. Like the Rolle's theorem is like inside of the mean value theorem. It's a subset. You know what I mean? It's a special case. Okay, so this is the mean value theorem where we're saying now whatever the slope is between the two points, uh, if it's continuous and differentiable on that interval, then we should be able to find a place where the slope is equal to that slope between the two points. The only thing is, this person got mixed up and just said set it equal to zero. Got mixed up with Rolle's theorem. That's not the case. If they had found the slope, had found the slope between negative one and one, the points at x is one and x is uh, a positive one, then it, and if it was zero, then they'd be good to go. But they didn't even find it, right? They needed to find it. So um, we'll say if the reason it's wrong is because it turns out that um, zero is not the slope find that slope? Yes. Okay. How do we find that slope? So it's original equation. Original equal equation. to negative one and then. Set it equal to negative one. And then, or not equal, put the one in the. Oh, we'll put it in for x, okay. And then do that with one as well. Okay. And then they get the points and they have to uh, divide one and minus okay. x. Or minus one plus that one. <laughs> yeah, we find the y values and then we already have the x values. Y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We have the slope. Uh, can I trust someone to figure out what, when you plug in, say, 1? You plug in 1, what do you get for y? Negative 2. Negative 2, okay, so f of 1 equals negative 2. What's f of negative 1? Zero. 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 So we get, let's call this the second one because it's further to the right. That's just typically how we do it. It doesn't really matter. Negative 2 minus 0 over 2. Over 2? One, oh wait. No, one, one minus negative one. So negative two over two, negative one. So the slope is negative one. So instead of setting equal to zero, we should have uh, set it equal to negative one. That would have been more right. And that gives us the point. The slope is zero. The point at which the slope is negative, negative one. one. Okay. Now we will obviously add one to both sides, treat this like a normal quadratic. Add one to both sides, get minus one here, and then then it will be equal to zero. But then that won't be the derivative, right? You know what I'm saying? We said the derivative equal to negative one. So if we can solve that equation, we'll find where the slope is negative one. To solve it, we will add one to both sides so that it's now equal to zero. Mm -hmm. We'll have 3x squared minus 2x minus one. And, uh, and then we'll go after it like that. Um, so if we kind of ignore that the work was wrong. Let's assume that these answers were correct. Why don't you cross this one out? It's not in the thing. It's not in the thing. Now can we give a word to thing? The interval. The interval. It's not in the interval. <laughs> this is like negative 0.5 something, and this is bigger than 1. It's past 1. So it's outside the Second, but I also want to make room for them, and I don't want you to see this yet. <laughs> okay. Do we have more questions? From, home, from the homework? Yeah. 29. Maybe it is really well. 29. 29. Let's first talk about Rolle's theorem. 
is, is the one that says, if you have two points that are the exact same height, they have the same y value, uh, then if you have a continuous indifferentiable function between those two points or on that interval, then at some point, if we go up, we're gonna have to come back down, we'll have a slope of zero. If we go down, we're gonna have to come back up, we're gonna have to have a slope of zero. No matter what, the slope between these two points is zero, and if we have a continuous differentiable function at some point uh, between A and B, we'll have to have a slope of zero. Even if we go straight from here to there, the whole thing will have a slope of zero. So no matter what, I'll have a slope of zero. The mean value theorem says no matter where the points are, they don't even have to have the same y value. Find the slope between them. And then if you have a continuous differentiable function on that interval, then the slope doesn't have to be zero, but at some point it will have to be equal to the slope between the two points. So here you try to find where the slope is zero. Here you try to find where the slope is equal to this slope. So the slope if you have done that straight, straight line. Yeah. So if the function is a straight line, that's easy. It's that way everywhere yeah. on that interval. If we go up here, well, we're going to have to come back yeah. towards this point somewhere. Even if we wait a long time, we're going to have to come back. And you can see right about there, the slope is going to be the same. Excuse the interruption. Please release the high school volleyball players. Please release the high school volleyball players. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we're ready for 29? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh, um, you know what? Let's see. I got PBS open. There's 29, now we don't have to look up and down, we can just look at the board. The height of the ball, uh, t seconds after it is thrown upward. So there's a ball, and it's thrown upward, straight up there. Um, and t seconds later, the height, from a height, starting at a height of 32, so here is the ground, which I always envisioned to be grass. Okay. The ground is always grass, for some reason. That's just my brain. Okay. And uh, this person is standing on a 32-foot ladder, which is not safe. Not at all. Your mom's there. Your mom's there. Holding it. It's thrown from a 32 feet with an initial velocity of 48 feet per second. So it's going up at 48 feet per second. Uh, so the height is given by this function. That's the height function. That's what this whole sentence is saying. And it's also giving you other information peppered in there. Verify that f of 1 equals f of 2. How do we do that? Both zero. Plug in 1, plug in 2. They're both zero. Is that what you're saying? Both equal each other. You gotta plug it into the yeah. height function. Right? F. That's the function f of one. Of one means put one in for t. So f of one equals negative sixteen times one squared plus forty-eight times one plus thirty-two. So we got negative sixteen plus forty-eight plus thirty-two. This is uh, thirty-six plus thirty-two. Sixteen. Thirty-two plus thirty-two. What? Thirty-two? Thirty-two. Thirty-two plus thirty-two. So at, what does that mean? What's this one, what's this 64 mean? Oh, so that's the y height of 64. Height of 64. X, what's it? X, what's it? 64. Time. 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 So apparently, at zero seconds, we're here, and at one second, it's gone up, it's at 64. Okay, why would f of two be equal to 64 as well? That's the, it's going down. It's 
coming back down, and it's a 64 again. Let's just verify that. Negative 16 times 2 squared, 48 times 2, 32. So negative 16 times. Do you, where do you get, you what? do the same thing and you use the immediate direct forms or 48? Where? What? It's 48 times 16 times 2 squared not plus 48. You watch the video and it's the same thing? Yes. <laughs> oh no. Did I fix it? <laughs> Plus uh, 48 times 2 is 96. I got you. Thank you. 16 times 4. Huh? Minus 64. 64 minus 6 is 32. I'm going to make a wild guess and think that that is 64. Yeah. Okay. So we verified that they are equal to each other. If those two are equal to each other, what theorem can we use? Rolls. 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 Theorem. If the y values are equal to each other, Rolls theorem is in play. As long as the function is continuous Rolls, yeah. and differentiable on that interval. Is it continuous and differentiable? Yes. Yeah, this is a, what kind of a, a graph would this make? A parabola. A parabola. It's a quadratic function, so it's going to make a parabola. According to Rolls theorem, what must be the velocity at some time in the interval 1 to 2? Zero. Zero, which means it must stop and come back down, right? Yep. It's got to stop going up and come back down, and in between there it will dead stop. Okay? Uh, find that time. How are we going to find the time where it stops? Um, like, hold on. Take, Take the derivative. And then set that to zero. Yeah. F prime of t equals negative 32t plus 48. I wrote it down correctly this time. Then what are we going to do with the derivative? Set it equal to zero. Set it equal to zero. Zero equals negative 32t plus 48. So, I want you to use calculus to do this work, but if you didn't know any calculus, and you knew that at time one it was at 64 feet, and then you knew intuitively it goes up and then comes back down to 64 feet again, where would it have to stop? Halfway, Halfway between one and two, one and a half. Now, use those things to like confirm your work, not to replace it. All right? I have had people on tests not do calculus, get the right answer and get no credit because <laughs> we just knew what it was supposed to come out to be for reasons like this. Well, I know it has to be right in between one and two, so two halves. Uh, but they got no credit. And they, they tried to argue with me and I was like, you're in a calculus class. Why would you not use calculus on a calculus test? Yeah. Anyway, if that person's listening to this, that was, that was bad. 59? It's an interesting one, okay? 59. So two bicyclists, two bicyclists. They uh, they start right here. They both race, and they get to the finish line. And they they get there. They start at the same time, and they get to the end at the same time. That doesn't mean that they're running right alongside each other. One could be in front, while the other's behind. They could switch. The one might be behind the whole time, but kind of catching up and then falling back. It could be lots of different scenarios. So they're not necessarily right next to each other. So we're going to prove that at some time during the race, the bicyclists are traveling at the same velocity. Gravity versus the height theorem. It's similar. That was the intermediate value theorem. This is the mean value theorem. The intermediate value theorem, we were, we were looking at the, the, the mountain climber's height. Like we looked at that function. And we... we we said at some, at some point, like those two would have to cross, right? He's going up and he's coming down, functions would have to cross. And at that time and that place, he'd be at the same time in the same place. But 
now we're, we're, we're talking about how quickly they're moving. And they're saying at some point, at exactly, at, at some point, they are at the same time going exactly the same velocity. Not at, like at, at time one hour he's going the velocity, and at time three hour, or time uh, two hours, the other guy happens to be going that same velocity. And so, the same time, same velocity. Got to prove that that's got to happen. And we're using, we're going to be talking about the rate of change, not just where they are. Obviously, they have to be in the same place at the same time at some point, at the beginning and the end at least, and maybe in between if they're passing each other. We're talking about they're going the same speed, the same, the same velocity. Right? It's less like that. Now we're talking about two people. We're going to try to prove that one's first, that one of their velocities is a certain value, but that they're equal to each other at some point. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like that, but it's hard to nail down because it's not saying this velocity. It's saying the same as this other velocity, which you also don't know specifically what it is. Yeah. So we have to figure out some way to obviously involve the derivative and find a place where they both have the same a lot of times in questions like this where there's two different things, two different, uh, like one hiker on two different days, or mountain climbing or whatever, uh, or two bicyclists or two racers or two whatever, two people or two different events, we want to try to take two functions and combine them into one. We can definitely look at both of their position functions separately. How could we combine their position functions into one function? Uh, maybe that might help. Well, we know how much time it takes. We don't know the distance. It wouldn't really matter. Really, it's more like a theoretical equation because there's no speci there's, there's some specific numbers, but they're really not. There's not that much information about numbers. Two, the two hours and fifteen minutes. If you think about it, it really all that matters is that they take the same amount of time. If it was one hour or if it was thirteen hours, it wouldn't really change our approach. Huh? Why would it be rolls to them? If we make the y value distance, we can do anything we want. So if we make the y value distance, they're, they're, do they start and end at the same? So here's what I'm trying to ask. They start out here, and they start moving towards the finish line. Okay. Um, so for rolls theorem to work just from like one person's position function, like their position's up here, and then they stop there at the end. Well, is that Rolls theorem? No. Oh. Yeah. But is it something about distance the same? Yeah. yeah. What's it? What's the same about? So f of b, f of a must be equal. No, not in right. Well, not in this one. If this is like racer or or bicyclist, a. It's like a reverse. Well, like it's yeah. the same between two bicyclists on the grass. But if uh, if we look at bicyclist B, his his might look like this. At some point, it's going to be zero, or the slope is zero. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, they both have to have the same slope at one point, which is the slope that's in the sky. Okay, but that's not necessarily that this, that slope is going to exist at the same time, but for both of them, yes, it, they would both have to have this slope. Could you find a point where it equals that slope? And then you don't really have a function to, to do that, to find specific values. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, like, combine, like, like you were saying before, combine them? Yeah, can we combine them somehow? Sarah? Or do you have different ideas? Yeah. So do you have an idea of how we can combine these two functions? 
about the position. Like somewhere in your heart, you feel like this. At the beginning, it was like it seemed like that this was the position is the same as the end, right? Because they start together, they end together. So what distance is the same at the beginning as at the end? The distance between the two of them, right? How do we find the distance between two things? That's the slope. Yeah. Say, we're overcomplicating. We're just talking about a distance. Okay. Say, I am this far away from the wall. Okay. I am uh, A feet away from the wall. And the podium is B feet away from the wall. How do you find the distance between those two of them? A minus B. And the length of the wall. A minus B. Right. My length, my distance, minus that distance. So can we do that with the cyclist? Okay. Here at the at the very beginning they're at the same distance. So the distance between them is and at the end the distance between them is. So now we have a new function. Um blue will be the color. So if we do bicyclist A and bicyclist B. Well, let's, let's shorten these up. Let, let's say that this is f of uh, t, and this is g of t. Okay, and this function is going to be f uh, of t minus g of t. We could make it h of t if we wanted. I don't know if that's going to be helpful. But, okay, so now let's look at these. So uh, here's f is green, and uh, and red is is the, the g of x or g of t. So, huh? Can make up for a match? Like with the back and the What do you mean by that? On the other part, minus G of T. Can we make that by the same function? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, G would be red. So we will make the colors match. Thank you. You're welcome. F of T minus G of T equals, and I'll see anything about to do this in blue. I'll do H of T in blue. Well, this is a, a, an interesting point, and so is this one. This is where they're like passing each other. So if we, let's get a little fancy here. So lock this, and then we'll take the same thing now. This one is here. Okay, so at this point, f, the green one, is bigger than g. Mm -hmm. So if we take f minus g, what kind of number will we get? A positive. A positive. A, positive. a bigger number minus a smaller number is going to be positive. So we get here, what will we get? Zero. 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 So there's going to be some positive values. And then we get down to zero. And then f is smaller than g, so we're going to take f minus g, what will we get? A negative. A negative, just showing that um, they have. Equal distance, right? And then the distance is the same. Zero. And now this is showing that that the second one is just like past the other one. And then back to zero when they cross each other again. And then, and then it will be positive. Uh, but then eventually, it'll go back to zero. Back to zero again because they will be at the same place at the same time. Okay. All right. So what? What are we gonna do with that? Separate. Separate it. Put it back over here. So which ones? The points where h of t is, well, if it would be zero. Right? On the x. What, h of t is zero? No. Looks like, like your hands are doing something else. Yeah, like h, h of t is zero. is zero. h prime of t, yeah. maybe? Yeah. h prime of t is zero? OK. Some of you said we want the x-intercept, and, and, and Sarah saying we should find where the slope is zero. Both? At both of those places, their velocities must be the same? It's well, that because one. in the beginning to end of it, they're both at zero anyways. So Do you want the slope because we're talking about velocity? Isn't that the slope? We're talking about velocity, we're talking about rate of change. If, if At these points, what's happening? Are the velocities the same? 
actually one of the velocities needs to be bigger because yeah. it's passing, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. One of them, they're, they're at the same place at the same time, one of them is passing the other, so if you look so at something even faster, one would be slowing down. In the middle of those, then, would be like where, like where they start to change. That's where one gets faster, one's going slower. There uh -huh. has to be a point where like red starts to overtake again or something. So if one's going, if one's going slower and one's going, this one's going faster, this one's going slower, this one slows down, this one speeds up. At some, At some point, point, they have to yeah. Yeah, be going the same velocity. Now, they're going to be at the same place, but they will be going at the same velocity. Okay. Now, think about what this function is. It's the distance between the two of them. Okay. If they're going the same velocity, what would you say about how fast the distance between them is changing if they're going the same velocity? It's not changing. It's not changing, right? So the rate of change of the distance between them will be how big when they're going the same velocity? So if we look at this function, um, at some point, even if they did pass each other in the middle of the race, we know at the beginning they're at the same place, and at the end they're at the same place. So there's definitely two places uh, at, at the beginning and the end of the interval where the y value is the same. They're both zero. And somewhere in between there, because it's a continuous and differentiable function, the slope also has to be zero. Right? And that's all we can really say. So since at the beginning, they're at the same place at the same time, meaning that uh, f of a equals f of b, well, this is a. f of a is equal to f of b, because at the beginning, they're at the same place, and at the end, they're at the same place. Since that's true, and the function between them is continuous and differentiable, they must be going the same velocity at some point, at least one point. They could ride along, ride along beside each other and be the same velocity all the time. They, the one could be in front of the other the entire time, but at some point, they'd have to be going the same velocity because they have to meet up again, right? At some point, yeah. At, at some point, the one that was behind the whole time is gonna have to close in on the guy ahead so that they finish at the same time in the same place. All that making sense? Good. Okay, so there you go, that was 59. That was a fun one. Any more? All right, let's pass it in.